As we speak right now, the Hurricane Hunters are flying through almost pretty much Hurricane Chris and it is rapidly intensifying. I'm MWG, let's get right into the tropical update where we are now going to have Hurricane Chris on the Atlantic, soon to be major Hurricane Chris. And yeah, that's right, we also have the remnants of Burl. Before we get to what was remnants Burl and Hurricane Chris rapidly intensifying, we have to talk about a little sore subject and that's Typhoon Maria. Yes, Maria again, because for some reason the same names retired in the Atlantic don't translate to the Pacific. They don't have any communication there. Weird. But Typhoon Maria right now is 120 mile per hour category 2 hurricane about to make landfall on the china coastline don't have to say much about it because it still has a very very good presentation on the satellite imagery as a still well-defined eye as a cat 2 status and it's about to make landfall within the next 12 hours maria actually made a direct landfall on one of those southern japanese islands i'm not going to try to pronounce it but it made a direct landfall there and it passed pretty good miles north to taiwan so the people in that taiwan got a nice break but for the landfall in china that's going to be a slight worry for the people there but enough about maria i wish the best to all the people in maria path and maria is not going to be a hurricane anymore within the next 24 hours that storm is going to be done or that typhoon is going to be done but let's head that back to the atlantic where we have some town talking about remnants of burrow which affected about 40,000 homes and businesses in puerto rico knocking out power there it's about to 5,000 right now so they already did some nice repairs in puerto rico and it's over a nice recovery and relief situation because if you do not remember just about like four or five days ago burrow was a hurricane it was is a 80 mile per hour hurricane didn't look that impressive on satellite imagery at all if you blinked you missed it but it was still a hurricane so for the rest of this 2018 hurricane season probably even going to 2019 and 2020 whenever there's a hurricane off to the east of the lesser antilles and it's heading west to kind of the lesser antilles in the puerto rico area that's definitely going to get the puerto ricans kind of riled up and kind of worried and gather supplies for this preparing hurricane hurricanes are scary especially when your whole island mostly didn't have power for about 150 200 days because of a cat 5 cat 4 hurricane so they definitely have a right to be worried whenever something pops up even if it's a tropical wave or tropical storm they have to they have to put their antennas out and look and search but good thing there was a ton of winter and dry saharan air making its way across the atlantic to inhibit burrows from staying and sustaining a major hurricane status but because of the previously mentioned dry saharan air and the wind shear burrow degenerated into a tropical wave and that's what it is right now and it's a pulling away from the island of hispaniola and there's a chance that it might just form yet again if we take a look at the satellite imagery burrow is just kind of a mess right now you could kind of see a spin in the cloud tops but those cloud tops aren't the coldest meaning that it's not the strongest of thunderstorms the remnants of burl is pulling away from the island of hispaniola in puerto rico so the rain for them is done but the rain for the bahamas is just beginning and is going to continue over the next 24 hours and the remnants of burl is probably going to jump some nice inches of rain in that area but right now burl's on the starting edge of the curve to the atlantic ocean so it's not going to affect any land but it does have a 20 percent chance to form within the next 40 hours and a 50 a 50 50 chance of free forming into a tropical storm in the next five days but it doesn't matter because it's just me giving its b name burl yet again but hey that's still gonna be a topic that i'm gonna be able to cover because right now the pacific and the atlantic don't look like they're gonna have any action after burl and about chris that i'm gonna talk about in a second after these two storms the activity is gonna be a little quiet so burl's gonna keep it going just for a short while but now talking about hurricane chris at 85 miles per hour it might be slightly higher than that when this five o'clock advisory goes out right now it's actually a tropical storm but I'm just estimating based off of the hurricane hunters because right now they're flying in and out and back in into this hurricane. But let's just talk about Chris for a second. It has been a 70 mile per hour hurricane for the past 21 hours, which is kind of ridiculous considering its structure. The hurricane hunters didn't fly into Chris Monday night, so they were unaware of the actual mile per hour. And just so you know, when the National Hurricane Center doesn't fly into these storms and they only fly out to these storms if they're close to land, which Chris is but for storms like burrow on the middle of the atlantic ocean it's just satellite and radar based estimates that's it not actual data from the hurricane hunters so it's just my personal opinion that chris should have been a hurricane as of this morning considering the structure of the storm just give it an extra five miles per hour but i guess chris is taking this personally and he's rapidly strengthening might just be up to a major hurricane 
and he only has a few short hours to do so. The whole thing so far about the whole life of Chris is that it's just sitting meandering off the Carolinas of the United States. It's bringing some five foot waves there and it's gonna bring some five foot waves along the coast, but that's it. The damages from Chris are gonna stop there. But getting back to it, the whole thing with Chris is just meandering in just one spot off of the North Carolina coastline. And when it's meandering off of one spot, it's capturing all of that warm water in that spot right there and bringing the colder water from the bottom of the ocean to the top floor, meaning that the overall water temperature of the ocean is decreasing. And it decreased fast because Chris wasn't moving at all. But as of the 16 hours of today, which is Tuesday, in case you're watching this in the future, Chris is now starting its jog, going to a fast paced run to the Northwest where it's going to affect Newfoundland. And I'll get to that in a second. But right now, if we just take a look at Chris's satellite imagery, oh, this is looking lovely. It has a nice clear eye. And how can you deny this thing of category two status? Right now, Chris is taking advantage of that Gulf Stream, bringing that warm water all the way to the Carolinas. But soon it's going to get into those Arctic water temperatures. And then from there, it's going to slowly start to weaken and turn post tropical. But for the next couple of hours, I'm just going to be capturing on all of this imagery of just Hurricane Chris looking beautiful with the eye. You don't get these hurricanes often in the month of July. Let me just say it again. We're a month ahead of schedule. We're not supposed to get our first hurricane until August, but yet in July, we've already had two. These two hurricanes do not correlate at all with the rest of the hurricane season, but wow, we have had an interesting and rampant fast start. But let me finish off talking about Hurricane Chris with what happened with the hurricane hunters today. Well, two hours ago, the hurricane hunters were going into Chris for the first time time today right they found 988 millibars and 85 mile per hour winds the very first go around then they came out of the hurricane came back up then the national hurricane centers went to make its second diagonal line across hurricane chris which it was a tropical storm when they first went in there the hurricane hunters went back into chris two hours later after the first run around and the first run around they found 988 millibars of pressure the second flight back into chris found a four millibar drop meaning that chris is rapidly strengthening possibly up to category three status it's got rid of all that dry air and it's absorbing the new warm waters of the gulf stream because it was just staying in that one spot for so long now moving it's capturing those warmer waters and taking it to its full potential and it's looking amazing but it's official chris is no longer a tropical storm at 70 miles per hour it's a hurricane at 85 miles per hour and it's going to affect newfoundland thursday night friday morning but just as an extra tropical system so it's just going to bring some rain and wind there that's it also another cool story about the weather it actually snowed two weeks ago in newfoundland two weeks later they're getting hurricane chris landfalling in their country oh canada and of course all of the weather is super interesting i personally love it so consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one for another tropical update